Norm Norlander here. I'd like to demonstrate next a classic streamer pattern called the spruce fly. This particular pattern is kind of near and dear to my heart because this is the fly on which I caught my very first steelhead. So let's go and see how it's put together, okay? First the materials we're going to use. I'm going to start out with one of Alec Jackson's spayfly hooks. This is a number five or number seven. I haven't quite figured out his numbering system yet. We're going to use some peacock curl. Now the original pattern called for peacock sword for the tail, but we're going to use the tips of this hurl. This part right here for the tail and this for the body. We're going to use some red floss. This is regular rayon floss. Uh, put it on a bobbin, it's a lot easier to handle. And then the wings and the hackle, we're going to use some beautifully marked badger hackle. It's got a lot of uh, variation in it. Uh, pretty nice neck there. We'll start out, as we usually do, by dressing the hook. Attach our thread up here at the front, a little ways back from the eye. Bind that looped eye down nice and tight. Okay. Now, let's run our thread down a ways. In fact, we're going to run it down just about to the point of the hook. Yeah, right about there. So very precise. Take about three pieces of peacock curl, strip them off the eye here, and we line up those tips. Actually, they come that way pretty well lined up. So we turn this around and we'll lay in our tail rather carefully, like so. Okay, and then we can just run that forward about halfway up to the eye. Yeah, maybe just a little bit further. Yeah, that'd be about right. Okay. Next, I'm going to take some floss, and we're going to tie that in right here, nice and careful like, and trim it off. Put your bobbin out of the way. Use your Norvice. Very easy, smooth, roll in that floss body right down to the tail and come back and forth a couple times and build up a bit of a taper to it. Oops, got a little lump there. We can go back and take that out. So no, we're right up to the part where the hurl body is going to take over. So we tie in our floss. Trim it off. Next we're going to take our hurl not a bad idea guys to throw in a half hitch before we do this next step here. When you're spinning your hurl and thread together, it's a good idea to do that every time. You spin up your hurl like that and make a chenille out of it. You can run it forward, go a little ways, spin it up a little more, go a little bit further forward. That's about right. Now come in and tie that off nice and firm like down there and clip it off. Now we're ready for the wings. What I've got here is a matched pair of badger hackles and the way I do it is I'll take these and I'll put them face to face. In other words the, the concave side is outwards. You line up the tips. You can hold them here so that the wing is going to be right to the end of the tail. Pinch it there, clip that to length, and knock out the loose ones. And the way I do it is I'll take and pinch these together and tie the two wings on at the same time right on top of the hook. Nice and firm like, and they'll splay out just beautifully like so. Perfect. I'll secure that with a half hitch. Now we've got another badger hackle, a little bit larger than the wings. And we're going to take and prepare that properly, strip it back a little bit, and clip that end off. Tie this on, tie it back to where the wings are, and then come back forward with your thread. Secure it with a half hitch. I'll pick up the hemostat here, grab hold of the tip of that hackle, 
and we're going to wind that forward very carefully about four or five turns okay bring your bobbin back tie in our hackle nice and firm like and clip that off a neat trick is turn this upside down and then you can half hitch against that upturned eye and it won't slip off okay I'm going to tilt these hackles back a bit and then we're going to wind over them so I want those back at about a 45 degree angle okay bring your thread forward a little bit Oops, I got a one errant hackle fiber there. That's just not going to do. This is supposed to be a pretty fly. Okay, upside down. And then you can very carefully put a nice, neat little tapered head on it. Like so. Notice it's upside down so it doesn't slip off. Clip that off. And there you go, guys. Hi, Norm Norlander here again. I would like to show you what has become my very favorite fly for fishing silver salmon up in Alaska. I call it a bunny clouser. It really works well. It's a very easy fly to tie. A fly typically is tied on about a size number two hook. Uh, what we're going to use here is a Wright McGill number two. I've got one. And we set that little beauty in there. It's a nice heavy hook thread I'm going to use is called flat wax nylon. It's a bright hot pink colored. We're going to start up here at the front, take a few wraps, and trim the thread off. It's pretty strong. You want to use your scissors to cut it rather than try to pop it off. Uh, next I'm going to use uh, some of this stuff. This is, uh, we call it a braid. It's a, kind of a mylar silver pearlescent material. You can get that down at the Artsy Craftsy store cut a little piece off. And the way I do this guys is I'm going to take and just fold it around the hook and tie it on like so. You don't have to be terribly fussy. Spiral to the back of the hook. Okay. Now when you cut the tail off, this has become the tail of the fly, don't cut it off like a paintbrush. Cut it off at a very uh, shallow angle and then you can brush it out. There we go use a wire brush like this you can brush that out it'll do it for you as soon as it hits the water a couple times but that's what the finish tail is going to look like next I'm going to lay in a little piece of this uh, silver mylar tinsel and that's going to be our rib so we'll catch that with a soft loop and I'm going to cut a little piece off there and we'll stick that back in our material holder now using the vise, one of the neat things about your Norvice is you can lay on even thread like this, just edge to edge, and use it to form the body of your fly. Okay, all the way up there. And I cut off that little piece of tail. Now, take your rib material. We'll make a winding check here. That's the first wrap, and then about five wraps forward. Come up to the front. Tie it off like so. And you can trim that. I'm using some dumbbell eyes. These are really heavy little rascals. You can see that they, they do look like little dumbbells. And we'll figure eight those on uh, pretty much back and forth a couple times. Tighten them by making a turn or two. End up with your thread in front of the eyes. Okay. Next I'm going to take a piece of bunny strip. Uh, this is this is a rabbit strip that's uh, hot fluorescent pink um, and we're going to cut it about two and a half inches long. Be about right for this particular size. Neat trick here is we're going to tie it in what's called a reverse clouser style where we tie it in upside down and in front of the eyes. Take a couple nice wraps like so good and firm and then getting back. Fold this up between the eyes and it makes a nice neat tidy head. Roll in a half hitch, come back to the whip finish, 
and you're good to go guys. That's all there is to it. It's just a wonderful pattern. Uh, it fishes really well. Casts easy. Has a little bit of action and color to it and a lot of flash. Norm Norlander here. I'd like to show you my version of a dry damsel. This would be the adult configuration of these little beauties. Let's take a look at what we have here, guys. Isn't that neat? It has an extended body. It's a great looking profile. And when these things are laying on the water, I'll tell you the fish will just come up and grab them. Here's how we go about it. First thing we're going to do is we're going to create that extended body. I've got a really interesting technique here. We're going to use a sewing needle. Now, we'll see, we've heated the eye of the needle so we can bend it around without breaking it. You put that in your Norvice, line it up at the top there, about like so, so when you rotate it, it's pretty well centered. We're going to use some dry fly dubbing. Uh, this is polypropylene, it floats real well, and of course, uh, the color is that of an adult damsel. Just a little bit of moisture on the needle. You can take a wee bit of dubbing like this and it'll catch and spin onto the needle like so. There we go. And you just run this back and forth so you get the right size, length, shape, whatever you, of that adult damsel. So you can twist a little bit. Start right there at the tip of the needle. Okay, there we go. Now we've got it. Okay, one of the distinctive features of these uh, damsels is that other than the bodies being bright blue is that they also have these black uh, segmentations on them. How do you do that? Well, I'll show you a really tricky way of doing it. You need to use your black marking pen. This little sharpie job right here. And we'll just start at the back end. Color that up a bit. Okay, now you skip a bit. Another band, another band, another band. I actually looked at some photographs and they do indeed have four bands. Okay, how do we keep it together? I'm going to use some water-based head cement. Uh, this is pretty neat stuff. Uh, when it dries, it's pretty tough. Still has a little bit of flexibility to it. So we're going to take this and we're going to saturate this body all the way through with this water base head cement. Okay, put the cork back in it, Norman. Now, pinch this, pull it off of the needle, and there you go, guys. You got a what's going to be eventually a really great damselfly body. Okay, we're going to set that down. We need to let it dry for a couple hours. Now, in the meantime, I'll replace my needle with a little light wire scud hook. And normally these things are tied on fairly small hooks, uh, even though it's a pretty good sized bug. I like these little short shanked hooks. Gives the fly a great profile. And with this extended body, we don't need a big long streamer hook. I'm using some dot black thread here. Pretty straightforward now. Just run your thread in and out of the gape of the hook and come back a ways. Here's a body like the one we just made, except that this one is dry. See, it looks pretty much the same. So we're going to tie it in here, about like so. Oops. There we go. Nice firm wraps and come back about like so. Got it? Okay, that's... Not too complicated, but that's about the right right size. Okay. Now next, I'm going to put a wing on this thing. A down wing, as they call it, even though this is a dry fly. For this down wing, we're going to use some northern bear. We'll take a little clump. That's what this is right here, guys. Just take a little patch. It's going to be a very sparse wing. We want it to be translucent. That's what this is really good for. So you pull out the under fur like this. We'll come back, trim it to length, catch it with a soft loop, tie that on. 
nice and firm like. There we go. Perfect. Okay. See, it's just about the length of the body. Let's secure that with a half inch. Next, we're going to post up. Now, the material I like to use for that is, uh, this is craft yarn. You get this down at the Artsy Craftsy store. I think they used it for macrame at one time, but a little piece of that will last a long time. A little section of macrame yarn. The way I do it is I fold the yarn around the shank of the hook. I'll come in like this, in the front, in the back, front, back, and then we post up. Okay. There we go. Now I want to form the thorax of the fly. That's the little bulbous part in the front there. So again, we're going to use our dry fly dubbing. Take a little pinch of dubbing like this out of here. And we'll spin this onto our working thread like so. Okay. Tighten it up nicely. We'll start in the back. Come right back to where that wing is tied in. Then come forward. We may need a nice little fat part right here in front. Okay, guys? And I ended up with the thread in front. Now, th this will be a parachute hackle. And for the hackle, we're going to use this, this fancy feather here. This is called Coq de Leon. It's a chicken that I guess uh, originally came from Spain, but it's got these nice uh, translucent hackles on it, with little speckles in them. Pretty neat stuff. Okay, here's one that's been pulled out. It's about the right size. Now when you're doing these parachute hackles, I think it's really important to prep your hackle properly. This is where we're going to come in and trim off on both sides of the hackle, leaving those little bitty nubbins in there. That way when you tie it in, the thread will lock into those and it doesn't slip. So you come up to the post and then we circle the post and the hackle both end up in front. Now I'm going to grab hold of this hackle. There are pliers here. And I'd like that first turn of hackle on that trimmed off section. And then we're going to come around and each time you go around, go underneath the preceding turn of hackle. Okay? And usually about four turns. Be about right. Okay? End up on this side. I'll preen up these hackle barbs, bring the bobbin around, capture the quill or stem, and tie it on. Okay? Pretty neat. And we'll trim out what's left of the quill. There you go. Okay, now we want to finish off the thorax and the head of the fly. Neat trick. I've left a little piece of rubber tubing on my bobbin. And I use that as a hackle guard. And that pushes the hackle out of the way. So now we can come in with a half hitch. That finishes off the thread work. Again, a little bit of dubbing. This will finish off the thorax. And it'll give the fly its characteristic shape. Okay. I'm going to tighten that dubbing up pretty good up here in front here. Okay. So we'll come back, blend it in with what we had before. You can see how that's working back there, guys. Okay. There we go. We'll bring our thread forward right up to the eye of the hook. I'll start my head with a half hitch, come back and finish it with a whip finish. And then when we get through, we slide that little hackle guard back onto our bobbin. That's where we leave it, okay? Nothing much left to do except maybe clip our thread off, twist the post, trim it, and there you go, guys. Hi again, Norm Norlander here. Next, I'd like to show you some ideas for tying the pupa stage of our fall caddis. This is perhaps the most productive fly that we fish with during September, October, and early November for our sea run cutthroats and an occasional steelhead here in the Northwest. The fly itself is really pretty easy to tie. We'll set this aside. And we're going to put in a fairly good size hook. Uh, this is a number eight 
It's a curved uh, nymph hook and uh, down eye and we've got a tungsten bead on the end of it. And the materials we use really pretty straightforward. Uh, first the body is going to be uh, composed of two different materials. We're going to use a a mixture of uh, colors here. This is called golden stone. It's a, a little bit of sparkle to it. Uh, looks pretty good. And then the front portion of the thing, we're going to use uh, some uh, rabbit fur that has a uh, little antron mixed into it. Again, gives it a little bit of sparkle. And uh, there'll be a collar on this thing right up next to the bead, and that's going to be black rabbit fur. Now, one of the other characteristics that we use. Uh, on this thing would be the uh, legs and the antenna and for that we're going to use some pheasant rump and I like these with the little brown tips in them. Uh, this is going to be a wet fly so you want to prep your feathers and we'll do this ahead of time. Here's one of these pheasant rump feathers and what I'm going to do is we're going to strip off the soft stuff down here towards the base of it. Be a wet fly so what we'll do is we're going to tie it in by the tip and I'm going to preen back some of these barbs. Now that's about all you're going to have to use there. So what works best is you just clip the front off and that's where we're going to tie it in. And get your feathers fixed ahead of time. It sure makes it a lot handier. And there'll be some copper wire for use that as a rib. Now let's start out by dressing the hook. I'm using some 6 aught black thread. Start up here at the front of the hook and just pop that off. Bring your bobbin in good and tight. You go all the way to the back like this, okay? And he might come forward just a little bit. I'm going to tie in a piece of copper wire here. and use this as our rib. So go forward a little bit. Okay, just Bring that right down to the very back end, like so. And we'll set that aside for right now. So just cut off a few inches so you can grab hold of it. And we'll store that up here in your material holder. That's that little spring. Now the back end of the fly, the abdomen as it were, is going to be composed of this, this is a synthetic dubbing mix here. Goes on pretty easy. We just take a little pinch out, like so. Give your voice a spin here and you see how nice and easy that dubs on there. You never have to use wax or loops or spit or nothing. Okay. We'll tighten this up a wee bit. And we'll start here and then we're going to go work our way to the back. And you can turn this and weave it in and out of the gape of the hook. So you can get right down there around the bend of the thing. Okay. And bring it forward a bit. And that's probably about where we want to stop. Okay. And you roll in a half hitch. And then the front half of this, the thorax area as it were, we're going to use some darker dubbing. And this is a mixture of rabbit fur with a little antron blended in to give it some sparkle. There you go. Pick some out of the bag there. And again, you can see, it doesn't really matter what kind of dubbing you're using with the Norvice. They all go on pretty easy. Okay, and again I'm going to tighten that up a bit and come back to about our midpoint there, come forward and you'll build up the thorax region, okay, and you can secure the thread. You want to do that when you're working in back of a bead so it doesn't slip off. I'm going to use a hemostat, grab hold of my wire right here. And we'll counterwind, in other words, go the opposite direction that we laid in the dubbing. And that'll give a bit of a segmentation effect. Just go right up through the thorax with it, run that extra wire on. Next, we're going to put on our wet fly hackle. And saw how we prep that. You want to tie that in with the shiny side forward. A couple turns and secure it. I'm going to wind this on manually and you fold your hackle and then manually bring it around. It only takes about two turns, guys. Here we fold that back. There we got it. And that's looking pretty good. Okay. 
Now we're going to go over that a couple times. I want that to lay back, so we're going to preen that feather back and then wind right over it. Right up to about there, okay? So that'll slope that backwards pretty good. Now to finish off the thorax and bring it right up to the head of the fly, we use a little rabbit fur. Pull some of that out of the bag. A few pinches like that. Again, just roll it right on the thread like so. Back up here and tighten it up a bit. Run that into place. Now this is a fly that you're going to actually fish through what we call the holding water. And you're going to fish this on the swing, much like you would your steelhead flies. I'm sorry, I forgot to finish it off there. Half inch. Whip finish. Now we can cut it off. There you go, guys. Hi, Norm Norlander here. I'd like to pass on some ideas of one of my favorite fisheries, and that's fishing for bluegill. We're going to use uh, some craft foam and create what I'd call a bluegill beetle. These little beauties are really great. Now when you're fishing in the springtime and those, those bluegills are on the beds, they just can't hardly have anything happen that bugs them more than seeing some little wiggly leg thing like this on top of them. They have a real attitude. Okay, let's take this one out of the vise. I'll show you how we do it. I'm going to use a standard issue dry fly hook. This is about a size 10. You can tie these anywhere from size 8 to 12s. The larger ones are pretty good in that the uh, smaller fish don't seem to get hung up on them. Now the material we're going to use is some craft foam. You can get this down at the Artsy Craftsy store. This is about 2 millimeters thick. And we're going to use some rubber legs. You can get these uh, in a variety of colors and things. Uh, by the way, if you tear apart a bungee cord, uh, this is what they're composed of, is these little rubber leg things. First thing is to take a uh, piece of foam, and we're going to cut it uh, into a strip uh, about the uh, width of the uh, hook gape, okay? And the thread I'm going to use is from Danville's uh, flat wax nylon. This is a fairly heavy thread, and the idea that it does is a fairly large diameter heavy, so it doesn't cut into that foam. The first operation, of course, is to dress the hook. Put your bobbin right against the shank of the hook, and go in and out of the gape, come back up to the front. And leave a little bit of room between the eye of the hook and where you stop the thread. Now we'll take a little strip of foam and we're going to cut this to a point here in front, about like that, okay? And we'll tie this in firmly right here at the point. And then I'm going to spiral back. See how I'm making a spiral? Now that'll roll that foam right on top of the hook. See how that cuts in there? It just rolls it right up on top. This is going to add some flotation to it. Now we get as far back as we can, the full length of the shank, and we're going to take several firm wraps, like so. Okay? Now I'm going to reach in and put in a couple half hitches at this tie-in point. There's one, there's two. And if we turn this over, you can see how we have a segmented effect right there. Now we're going to counterwind. We're going to go the opposite direction as when we came forward. Okay, so there. See how we can follow the previous wrap like this? And that way you maintain the segmentation on that thing. I'm not sure that a bluegill really is bothered by it that much, but what the heck. We can do it. Let's do it. Come all the way forward, and we're going to secure that with a half hitch up here at the front. At this point, you can actually slide that around a little bit. Okay, so now we've got it pretty well evened up. Next, we bring this top foam over, come up to the front, secure it, with a few nice firm wraps and then a few not so firm wraps. Okay, and again you can even that up. I'm going to trim this about like so, and this will become the head of the fly. 
you can clip off the corners here it just makes it look a little bit more artsy craftsy okay now at this point you can level everything that'll kind of slide around the hook so once you have it pretty well leveled out we're going to use some super glue and glue it to the hook so it doesn't slide anymore right, like so okay It's pretty neat stuff. Be sure to put the top back on it. Okay. Now the legs. Here's a neat trick for doing legs. First I'm going to even these things up. We'll catch it. Not like so. So those tips are evened up. And I'd like to use a leg that's oh, probably about twice the length of the body. So we're going to clip those off. Now those two are same length. We'll take one of our legs and catch it on the thread. And you bring it around so that the ends are even again like this, okay? That way they're just the same. Take the vise, roll it over, do the same thing on the other side. Wrap your leg around there, even up the tips, pull it into position. There we go. Now a few not so terribly firm wraps around there, guys. Okay. There you go. And we'll reach in here with a half hitch. And then we'll come back and whip finish right on top of the half hitch. So that leaves a nice distinctive black band on that yellow body. And you can see how those legs are wiggling already drives those bluegill nuts. Okay, even those up just a touch. That looks pretty good. Okay, another little touch of our super glue. Put that right on top here. And that'll keep it together pretty well. Give it a go. I think you'll really like these things and they're a lot of fun to fish for. Just before you go, I wrote a little book that I would like to give to you. I call it the seven habits of calm and happy people. It includes exercises for really implementing all that stuff, a lot of resources for reading more about it and some of my weird drawings too. At these are difficult times we all struggle so I decided to give it to my viewers for free. So go to findcalm.com book and I'm confident that you're going to find it valuable.